Hey, what up, guys? Coming to you this morning with the What's Next on Ryota Murata. He is the WBA, the two-time WBA regular middleweight world champion right now. Um, he fought in the main event of an ESPN Plus card that came from Japan on Monday, uh, December 23rd. And he took on Canadian Steve Butler, dominated him. It was an optional defense, fifth round TKO victory, um, and retained his world title. So now the question is, what's next for Ryota Murata from Japan? Well, what's supposed to be next is a mandatory defense in a third fight, a rubber match, with former champ Rob Brandt. Um, Brandt beat Murata in October of 2018 by a one-sided unanimous decision to, to take the title from him. Uh, the two rematched in July of this year, 2019, and Murata got revenge stopping Brandt in the second round. So Brandt uh, apparently had a rematch clause in the contract. They were supposed to fight uh, towards the end of the year. Murata asked Brandt to take step aside money so he could make an optional defense. Brandt said yes. And, um, you know, uh, with the winner, our Murata, to face Brandt um, in a third fight next year. Well, Brandt um, is uh, currently, he was supposed to fight on January 11th on the ESPN, ESPN card on January 11th, but he had to pull out with an injury. So, you know, the question is, is Brandt going to want that third fight next now? Um, because by the time they fight, uh, you know, let's say April or May, we're looking at almost a 10-month layoff for Brandt. So is he going to want to do that? We'll see. But let's run through the top 10, see what other options there could be if that fight does not happen, and we'll go from there. So we'll start with number one, WBA super champion Canelo Alvarez. Uh, could he face Murata next? I guess there's a possibility considering Murata is the regular champion. I don't think this is a fight the WBA is going to order. Um, I don't think there's much interest out of Canelo, but then again, I wouldn't be surprised because he is going to fight in May for sure. Um, does he want to come down and face a guy uh, like Murata? He's a former Olympic gold medalist, but, you know, has suffered a couple losses now. Um, you know, even though he's gotten revenge on both the losses that he suffered, um, does Canelo want to give him the time of day and fight him? I, I, I'm leaning more towards a no, so I think it could happen, but I don't think it's likely. Next up, number two, IBF champion Triple G Gennady Golovkin. Well, Triple G is supposed to be making a mandatory defense in, like, February, and then setting up for um, a possible rematch or third fight with Canelo in May. If that doesn't happen, that would be right around the time anyways that Murata would probably be fighting if he doesn't fight Brandt. I think it's possible. Triple G almost fought Murata a couple years ago. Um, you know, and, uh, he actually was in line to face Murata after he lost to Canelo in the rematch in 2018, but then Murata lost. So, um you know, lost to Rob Brandt. So I think it's possible these two guys could lock horns, but I think Triple G is going to try to focus on more known names, but I don't think it's completely out of the ballpark. But Triple G, I do believe Triple G and Canelo are going to fight again in May. So I don't think this is going to be next for Rio de Murata with Triple G, but we'll see. Next is number three and undefeated WBC champion, Jamal Charlo. Uh, Charlo's got options with the PBC now if he can't get the big dogs in the ring. Um, I'm not completely ruling it out because I know, I know, um, you know, the PBC and, uh, and top rank are going to be working more together now, but I, I don't see it right now. Um, it would be possible, but I don't see it. Next at number four is former two-time world title challenger, Sergey Daryavinchenko. Um, Daryavinchenko is likely going to be out for a while, uh, maybe the first half of the year suffering, you know, recovering from that cut and that war he had with Triple G. Um, but I don't see, I don't see him next for Murata. I think Murata, it's kind of, you know, um, I just don't see it. I think, uh, Jerry Vincenco is going to have some options, but I wouldn't completely rule it out because this is the kind of guy that Murata, if he really wants to take that next step and face the top dogs like Canelo and Triple G and Charlo for that matter, he's going to have to uh, beat somebody along this level. That's the one thing that's kind of been plaguing him fighting for top rank is he hasn't been able to get in a ring with somebody on even a secondary level, um, you know, and he's been, you know, he suffered the loss to Rob Brandt. So I think um, an opponent like Gary Vinchenko would make sense, but I don't, for some reason, I don't think this fight happens next. 
Um, next at number five is the WBA interim champion, Chris Eubank Jr. Now, this is interesting. I think this could be possible. If, if the WBA orders Eubank to face Murata, um, I think it's possible these two guys could lock horns because now Murata's the interim champion. So, yeah, I could see that one. Um, you know, I do think he's probably going to, most likely going to fight Rob Brandt next, but I really could see Eubank as a, the next possible opponent. Um, but we got to wait and see. Next at number seven is the undefeated Demetrius Andre. I think this is a fight that Bob Arum and everybody's staying away from because Andre is not a big name. His style is ugly, and I just don't see this one. Um, next at number eight, um, actually, or no, number seven is actually Murata. Uh, Andre was number six, so we'll skip over that. Next at number eight is um, the Rob Brandt, a third fight. I really think this fight is going to happen next. I think Brandt knows that um, he doesn't, you know, if, if Murata moves on to other things, then he's going to have to face somebody else, and I think he wants that rubber match with Murata before that happens. So I do think Rob Brandt is going to be next for Rio to Murata. Um, and then at number nine is um, the former middleweight champion, undefeated Jaime Minguia. He's coming back in January, taking on Spike O'Sullivan. But this is Golden Boy working with... Um, working with top rank. I think Golden Boy wants to bring Minguia along a little better and put him in against, uh, you know, if they're going to take a risk, they want to put him in against a, well, a better known name than Murata, not take so much risk. So I think, I, I don't think this fight's going to happen next or is possible next. And then finally at number 10 is Matt Korobov, former world title challenger. He suffered the TKO loss, but he injured himself in that fight to Chris Eubank. So I really don't, you know, he's coming off of that. Um, you know, I, I don't think uh, top rank wants to take a risk and throw him against a guy like Korobov, who is talented. So I don't see this fight happening next. But Murata, um, he's been suffering from fighting for top rank the last couple of years because this is not a top rank dominated division. There's only one or two guys from top rank. Actually, I think Murata, my, Murata and Rob Brand are the only two guys that represent top rank. But with top rank and the PBC working together better, um, Murata can make a name and really put himself in the mix this year. You know, uh, you know, coming up, and hopefully that happens, and it leads to a bigger fight. But I really do think next for Rio de Murata is going to be a rubber match with Rob Brandt, and um, we'll see. So that's it, guys. That's the what's next for WBA regular middleweight champion Rio de Murata of Japan. True boxing. You've been hit with the truth.